Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary might have just come out on PC, but instead of playing Halo, I've been thinking about this theory. What if at the beginning of Halo Combat Evolved, when Master Chief wakes up, he decides to put a frozen lasagna in the oven and wait for it to cook so that he can have a great meal after sleeping for however long he's been asleep? And according to Google, it can take anywhere from about 60 minutes to 90 minutes to heat one of those things up in the oven, and then of course allow for cooling time and consumption time. So what if Master Chief had to do all of the events in Halo Combat Evolved quickly enough so he could get back to the Pillar of Autumn and eat that lasagna before it got too cold. Would this be something that is even possible? Well, fortunately enough for us, speedrunners in the Halo community have managed to beat Halo in just 1 hour, 9 minutes, and 55 seconds, which leaves Master Chief just enough time to grab his lasagna off the Pillar of Autumn and eat it on that spaceship at the end when he finds out Dustin Echoes is still alive. So how is this possible? How did speedrunners do this? And how can you do it for your own lasagna run? Let's look into it. So of course, first up, before we jump into this, we got to give a huge thank you to Garish Goblin and Max Lou for helping us out with this video and giving more insight to this speed run. Of course, Garish Goblin, who is the world record holder who set the record just a little over a month ago with that impressive time of one hour, nine minutes and 55 seconds. That will be the footage we'll be going through today, but also Max Lou, who is the second place speedrunner, helped us out a ton with more insight in breaking down the speed run. So shout out to them links to their stuff is in the description down below. Okay, starting things off, looking at the Pillar of Autumn. This has to be right when Master Chief put the lasagna in the oven. Starting things off, Goblin just runs through everything since he doesn't have a gun and can't really do too much here. You can actually trigger the bridge cutscene with keys a little bit early by entering the bridge area and then walking backwards. After skipping the cutscene, he leaves the area as quickly as possible, making sure not to get stuck on NPCs or any walls that are sticking out in the way. Now, you won't get the pistol by going through this way, but the cafeteria door opens up right away and you don't have to kill that grunt wave. From there, we see Goblin get the assault rifle and just runs and guns down the enemies that are in the way. Now with some well-timed grenades, he actually takes out these elites pretty quickly. And upon getting to this more open room that has the stairs, you can actually do a quick grenade jump to get to the upper level a little bit faster. There's also another time save on this level that you can do when Cortana starts her dialogue to open the doors to the tunnels a little bit quicker and you can end it early by manipulating several checkpoints along the way. From there, at the end of this level, we see Goblin just killing all the enemies with some well-timed grenades and ending it as fast as possible. Next up is the level Halo, and after running away from the murder scene because Chief didn't buckle up his seatbelt and ping-ponged around the ship killing everyone in the ship, aka the Escape Pod Massacre, you run towards the waterfall where there is a little rock. From there, you can jump on the rock and throw a grenade at the rock wall, using it to jump onto a ledge. This actually saves a few seconds and keeps the first waves of enemies from spawning, including that annoying Banshee. From there, it's just a long walk to the base, but then you can encounter the enemies that we see Goblin kill as quickly as possible. He then goes for a plasma pistol and just noob combos the elites, which is a classic strategy when you're dealing with Halo Combat Evolved. After all the enemies are dead, you're supposed to just kill Sergeant Johnson in order to skip the dialogue and progress a little bit quicker, but in the specific speedrun that we're looking at here, here, the game glitches and results in Goblin having to just kill all of the NPCs quickly. Rest in peace. Then when the next set of enemy ships comes in, we see Goblin immediately sticking an elite before it even gets out and then just cleans up the rest, basically repeating that for the rest of the enemy ships that come in along the way. From there, after getting in the Warthog, we see Chief driving through that natural formation in the cliffs. I don't care what Cortana says, it is a natural formation. And then he goes on to activate the light bridge and jumps in the Warthog to drive across. After getting out of the tunnel, he stops to pick up a sniper and continues driving to the next base. He also does this sticky launch from the driver's seat to skip having to walk around the big pipes in this section. And the main strategy here is to just take out all of the NPCs, not even killing all of the enemies, getting back in the Warthog, and then driving to the next area. From there, he then takes out all of the enemies and Marines with the sniper and pistol from up on the hill. I mean, Chief's got stuff to do. He has a lasagna waiting for him. And before he he heads down into the canyon, he takes out some reinforcements that dropped in and jumps into the pelican that picks him up at the end of the level. Next up, we go to Truth and Reconciliation and dropping out of the pelican. He turns around once again and just kills all of the NPCs. We assume this is mostly to skip more dialogue and progress quicker along. Then he just takes out all of the enemies in his way, making his way up the cliff on the side. Once getting to the bottom of the grav lift, we see Chief take out more enemies as quickly as he can, and he pretty much 
dodge literally just spawn kills most of them as soon as they drop. Now before the hunters come, he positions himself to be able to shoot right into their backs with a sniper and is able to kind of spawn kill them as well. It's kind of impressive to see. On the ship, he starts throwing grenades at one of the wrecks of a wraith to do a launch on top of the map. First he clips into the wreck and then throws one final grenade to launch him right up there. And this allows him to actually skip quite a bit because the next part of the level didn't load. It's all black and you have to know exactly where to walk. But if you know what you're doing here, it's a really decent time save. Later when he gets into the first big firefight room, he does another launch to the upper platform by timing a three plasma grenade and one regular grenade perfectly with a pickup of an overshield, which launches him up all the way this far without dying. He then clears more rooms and hallways, almost never taking a moment to stop and taking out the room that had the golden sword elite in it can take a little bit of time, but with some well-timed shots and grenades, this also can be done. After releasing the prisoners, he continues on down the hallways, but turns around to kill two Marines, making sure not to kill keys in the process. And then finally he heads back to the room where he killed the first golden elite. He kills all the elites that spawned again, which then triggers the level's end. <laughs> Next we're jumping into the silent cartographer and the main strategy here is to jump out and ahead to the left since you can skip the first part of this level easily. And we do this just every time we play this level normally. We see Goblin get into the warthog that's laying flipped over on the beach and proceed to drive it to the building to the left. He then drives the warthog all the way down into the building and runs over some enemies in the process, then drops off the little bridge into the bottom platform instead of taking and having to wait for the elevator to come up instead. He lines himself up with another specific point on the floor to do another grenade skip to get back to the upper platform. And some of the grenade jumps that speedrunners in Halo CE use are some of the most insane jumps we've ever seen. I mean, they're more impressive than any other Halo speedrun, especially because whenever Luke and I ever try to do anything with grenades, we usually just end up dying immediately, especially in Halo Combat Evolved. From there, he gets back into the Warthog that he parked inside the building and waits for the Pelican that is going to pick him up. Once it comes in, he drives outside and jumps into the Pelican to end the level. Next, we're going on to the assault on the control room, and the very beginning is fairly straightforward, and you honestly just run through the hallways and kill all of the enemies until you are outside. Once he is outside on the first bridge, he does this Banshee grab that you can actually only do on Legendary or Heroic difficulty, since the Banshee doesn't spawn here otherwise. He does it by standing in a specific spot, tricking the Banshee to fly into the mountainside right behind him, and this is one of the main reasons why easy and legendary world records when it comes to Halo Combat Evolved speedruns are just two minutes apart from each other, since you can save a bunch of time on the harder difficulties by utilizing this Banshee. He then flies with the Banshee all the way into the tunnels and then the underground section where he reuses it to skip the bridges, basically to get to the other end of the level quickly. When getting to the last part, he actually takes the Banshee inside the building in order to do a teleport glitch. He activates the glitch by getting out of the Banshee and then punching it in two specific spots, which for whatever reason teleports him outside to the snow bridge, where he then gets into another Banshee and flies to the doors in the last area, which he then lines up the Banshee again, gets out, punches it to activate another Banshee teleport glitch, which teleports him right in front of the button at the end of the level. It's a little confusing to follow all of the stuff that happens here at the end, but it's really impressive and just the stuff that goes into figuring out these mechanics is cool enough to see on its own. Next, we're going on to 343 Guilty Spark, and when dropping into the level, it's all about taking the fastest path to the first structure, knowing which pathway to take and what little skips to do along the way using grenades to get up on the hill, which is essential. He then actually is able to jump across the elevator shaft once inside and push the button since he is staying close to the wall. He can actually drop all the way down without taking any damage. While in the underground structure, he goes up to a wall, throws a grenade and launches himself up into the ceiling above the map. And then he jumps back into the level after walking on top of it for a bit to get to the hallways he needs to be in right next to the following elevator. From there, after a short elevator ride, which actually he mostly skips by dropping down, he does some parkour to get across to the next room while staying on the top platforms. He picks up some active camo, he walks past everything for a bit until he has to do another grenade jump to get to another elevator and to get back up outside. Outside, he clears all the enemies in his way while knowing exactly where their spawn is and how to quickly kill them, and then hurries to the end of the level where there's actually a few different strategies you can do depending on what difficulty you're on. The one he does here is linked to a combination of perfect pathing outside and killing the two sentinels as fast as possible, exactly 
eight seconds after all of the sentinels are dead, you can trigger the end by jumping into a specific spot. How anyone figured out the exact timing that allows you to trigger it is beyond me, but it's cool nonetheless. Then this takes us to everyone's favorite level of all time, the library, but let's see if there's any way speedrunning strats can make this level even better, or faster at least. At the beginning, if you do a grenade jump over the first wall and then run up to the first flood and only shoot them once in the arm, then run to the first door and then stand in the left corner, you can trigger a flood to appear. Then if you wait for it to melee you, then get behind it and wait for it to face you and then shoot it twice, there's a chance you activated a trick that somehow people figured out. If you did this right, the flood should lay in a specific spot and by standing on its chest as it revives, you'll be glitched into the floor. And then from there, you can just jump through and get to the other side. This is a technique that's called flood bumping and it is an essential strategy when trying to beat the library. After that, you can play the first floor of the library pretty much like normal, just running through and shooting enemies along the way. But once you get to the second floor, you can use a technique to prevent enemies from spawning by triggering the part in the front of the next door by walking back and waiting there for 35 seconds and that door will then open in which you can proceed. From there, we see speedrunners get into the inner ring, the part where the elevator would normally go up and down, and then they parkour along the outside edges. And this is not only faster, but it also despawns a lot of enemies along the way. From there, the next strategy is to skip the next door by doing a grenade jump onto the middle of it and getting through the little hole that is between the door since it's already partially open. And beginning on the third floor, we see speedrunners continue mostly normally, knowing the right paths and enemy spawns along the way. When he gets to the next door, one of the most challenging skips in the game actually comes up. It's another one of those flood bump tricks, but it has to be executed perfectly right as you turn the corner. There are three floods lined up against the door. You have to throw a grenade either to the far right side of the door or in between the farthest two flood at the right. Then shoot your pistol at the door and shoot the farthest left flood in the chest twice such that its body will fall perpendicular to the door. Note that the flood falls at a slight angle when it dies. Stand on top of the dot on the body right up against the door. If you do this correctly, you can bump into the door and there is also the chance that the furthest left flood is not a reviver and in that case you have to restart to last checkpoint. So this is gonna be really frustrating because not only do you have to be really perfect with how you do this, there's also a level of RNG that goes into this as well. Getting to the second door on the third floor, there's another bump to get into the door. This time, instead of jumping to the other sides, we see speedrunners turn and actually jump on top of the map here instead. Getting on the last elevator to get to the final floor and to do the final flood bump that is required for this run, you have to go through another door that is halfway open, and then from there you can grenade jump through it. Finally, ending the level of the library. This level is a pain to do a speed run on, and honestly, it's a pain to do research on just figuring out how this speed run works. It seems like there's a lot of RNG and a lot of just breaking Halo, but hey, that's the type of stuff that we really like to look at when covering these videos. Next, we're going on to two betrayals, and he quickly takes out the Sentinels with a plasma pistol to open the door and then continues on just you know, killing enemies. And getting outside, you're gonna need to drop down without dying to get to those banshees, and then use a banshee to quickly get back up to the door, triggering it to close, and then quickly flying back out with the Banshee before it completely closes. Now this is a strategy that's used to deload a bunch of enemies and makes the level a lot easier and quicker to beat. Afterwards, you might need to fly to this point and quickly run to the pulse generator and destroy it. We then see Goblin get back into his Banshee and fly to the next part and runs through the inside killing enemies, does a little bit of parkour grenade jumps, and basically just does that for a while until he reaches the next outside area at the ground. From there, you can get in a ghost and drive to the next Banshee, and once you have the Banshee, you can fly up to the next area, destroying the next pulse generator along the way, get back into the Banshee, fly down through the caves into the tunnels, and from there, there's a little trick you can do where you can actually use the Banshee and do this clip to get the Banshee through, just by kind of wedging the nose in the right spot. And from there, you can just fly through the tunnel, getting to the last pulse generator and end this level as well. Next is Hello My Name Keys, and 
starting off, there is another flood bump you can do. So that's just great. It, hopefully you have this mastered by now. It gets you through some of the debris and it gets you to the other side of the hallway. Also doing so seems to freeze all the enemies in the hallway in place. So you can just kill them, which is kind of nice. From there, level familiarity really just comes into play here and knowing where to go in the ship without getting completely lost can be pretty helpful. And of course, after the keys cut scene, we see Goblin go straight to the area where the final ship comes in. He waits for the Banshees to spawn and kills the elite right as it's about to get out. He then kills the second elite and ends the level early. And last but not least, we make our way to the Maw. Early on, we see Master Chief run through the Pillar of Autumn to get his lasagna until he gets to a closed door that is about to open up. And by sitting right in front of it as it's opening, you can actually get bumped on top of the map once again. We see Goblin walk forward a bit, which loads the next part of the level. And from there, he skips a whole section and drops back into the level to walk to the engine room. That's actually a pretty decent skip right there. And there's no real strategy to destroying the engines much quicker than just the regular way. You just want to be really good at it. Do some sick jumps and get it done in like 10 seconds if you're really good. I mean, every time we try to do this, we get lost along the way. We fall down. It's a mess. From there, we have the final Warthog run where you have to just pretty much drive as quickly as you can. There isn't really any skips here. You just have to be really good at the Halo Combat Evolved Warthog mechanics. Also, don't forget to throw some 360 swag in there. But if you are fast enough at driving, you can get to the end of this level, thus ending the run. We saw Garish Goblin get his world record run with 109.55, which is insane considering we got to see him beat his own personal best and world record three times within just a few weeks. But it just goes to show you that Master Chief would be able to get his lasagna in time and eat it and it'd still be probably decent because he hurried through the events of Halo Combat Evolved as quickly as possible. But hey, after all of that, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe with notifications on for more videos just like this one and you won't miss anything we upload even if YouTube's acting all whack. Also, if you want to, you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow me at Rocket Elijah or you can follow Luke at Rocket Sloth Luke. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys.